Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, it's time for Service House Tour Highlights version 0303 2023. That's right, and I've got more changes for you. I've made some enhancements to my application, and we're going to get started with a nice little episode summary. In this episode, you can expect up to, or including, um, 13, well actually let me start, there's 39 applications since our last video that we're going to cover. Of those 39, 13 of them are new releases. We're going to go through 20 highlights. There's one fix out there for us and five release notes fails. So I've got some stats running on this content now. Let's scroll on down and take a look at our first batch. We'll start with the release notes fails and knock those out of the way. BT Incident Management Integration, Job R, Patient Trial Study Oversight, Service Operations Workspace, Express List, and Service Channel Facilities Management. All release notes fails. If you're wondering why and you haven't seen before, a release notes fail is where there's a release, but there's no information about what's in the release. So you can see here, great example, version 1.09, minor release. Well, what's minor about the release? What changed? Why would we want to update? That's what I mean. They failed at putting in good release notes. We won't pick on them. I just want to call them out and say we're not going to talk about these because there's nothing to talk about. Uh, we don't know what changed. Next up on the list, we're going to go look at fixes. There is only one fix that came out. It's the, I hope I'm saying this right, TACA map or TACA map, IT financial management, ITFM, CSDM compliant cost model. Had a small little fix, not worth spending a lot of time on it, but if you have it installed, you may want to go look at it. So let's jump into the good stuff here, our new releases. We're going to start with Beyond 20 Sharewell migration. This is Beyond 20 Sharewell migration offering, enabling a risk-free migration of Sharewell service management and asset management to ServiceNow. Key features, ensure continued compliance with SOX and FOIA data retention requirements, continued access to legacy data, and BPC expertise in both Sharewell and ServiceNow to ensure optimal customer outcomes. And you can see there the technical features about incidents, problem, knowledge, and change records. Migrate all the record attachments, that's huge. Migrate Sharewell journal entries and stores legacy data separately so as not to pollute current metrics. I don't have any pretty pictures on this one, so we'll jump right to the next one, which is gonna be BT Inventory Management CMDB Sync. Uh, this is an easy and secure way for you to sync inventory from the BT system. Key features, what I just said, plus configurable frequency either in real time or agreed interval solution for Delta notifications based on the inventory updates for the specified tables and columns. The CMDB synchronization app allows customer to obtain a milestone extract of inventory for alignment with BT CMDB based on specified conditions. We do have some pretty pictures for there. There is a bond record. Uh, looks like a bond record with a related list and transactions. There is a dashboard, a unified dashboard showing today's transaction state, seven day transaction state, polar state, seven day polar state, transaction direction, orphan requests. Got another view here of the BTCM DB sync data sets. You can see what that kind of looks like there. And another one of the CNDB activity logs. Um, so the activity logs that are going on there. And then it looks like I'm back to an integration form. And what else I got? I got a message. So these are different messages coming in. And this is back to the bond transaction that we started off with in the beginning. So that's the pretty pictures for BT Inventory Management CMDB Sync. We'll go to our next new application, CASC HR Essentials, Employee Centered HR so Delivery, Service Delivery, offered, offering powered by the ServiceNow platform that creates highly efficient automated HR workflows. Key features, HR case management and agent workspace, up to 10 HR services, HR knowledge management, two knowledge bases, HR employee center portal, reports and dashboards, accelerated requirement workbooks, and on the technical side, profile HR profile data integration from your HRIS system. No pretty pictures on that one. We'll hop into our next one here, CMMC NIST 800-171 Vendor Compliance Assessment, comprehensive set of vendor questionnaires and templates for conducting vendor assessment mandated and mandated by the Department of Defense or DOD. Key features, leverages the targeted client's current investment and service now, allows the primary contractor to seamlessly integrate the pre-built content and template to send out the CMMC level questionnaire and document requests to all suppliers. All content is designed around CMMC controls for level one and level two. 
Vendors can attest to implementation, upload evidence for the primary review. Primary can track non-compliance issues in the vendor risk module in ServiceNow, and primary can request professional services if required to help with the implementation of controls to pass an external audit. We do have some pictures on this one. This is the portal of what your vendor would see if they're completing a questionnaire in the vendor portal. This is a vendor risk assessment on the back end showing that it's been submitted to the vendor, and this is a screenshot showing the assessment templates in the vendor risk view, CMMC level one and level two, and we have the assessment metric types. These are different questionnaires, the questionnaire templates. There's the menu showing policy and compliance, exception questionnaires, vendor risk, and the questionnaire templates. And here is the app in the My Company, uh, CMCMC app in My Company. So this is what would show up if you're looking at it and trying to install it, it looks like. And then we're back to the vendor portal there. So some nice pictures and new release from uh, Security Bricks Inc is one who released that. Next up is going to be Cyber Six Guild Dark Feed and following on its heels, Dark Feed Enrichment. But the Six Guild Dark Web IP Hash Domain URL Taxi. That is a mouthful of words that I'm not really sure what it means. Let's go look at the key features. Powered by the broadest automated collection from the deep and dark web, Cyber Six Guild Dark Feed is a feed of malicious indicators of compromise or IOCs, including domains, URLs, hashes, and IP addresses. IOCs are automatically extracted and delivered in real time, and it is actionable so ServiceNow customers will be able to receive and preemptively block items that threaten their organization directly from their ServiceNow dashboard. You can see there, this is in the threat intelligence and security incident response applications within ServiceNow. Let's take a look at the pictures. There are some sources, it looks like, a, no, taxi profiles, hail a taxi, and six gill uh, hail a taxi. Six Guild Dark Feed. That was like their stuff right there. I'm not sure hail a taxi is part of theirs. Here's a screenshot of the indicators of compromise, dark web links, compromised sites, uh, etc., etc., paste bin hashes. Let's see, submit a request. This is a support uh, to get support on the application, it looks like. And then they're back to those uh, taxi profiles. So that is new. And I said the next one would be a fast follow. This is the enrichment piece of this. Um, know what's out there, it says. Key features, uh, let's see, by enriching IOCs. Automatically enrich ServiceNow IOCs, machine to machine via dark feed. Block threats and enrich endpoint protection in real time from the ServiceNow dashboard and gain contextual and actionable insights with essential explanations of ServiceNow IOCs. I do have some screenshots on this one. This was the configuration, setting it up. Here is a list of the observables. Um, and then there is an observable they've opened up for commerce.h moktar.com and uh, run a threat lookup. So you can use six skill to run a threat lookup. And then we're back to the configuration or setting up that application. But there you go. Two new apps from six skill limited cyber six skill dark feed was those. Uh, next on our list, employee experience. I looked at this several times. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. The Yaye way? Yaye? Yai? Yai way? I'm sure someone's going to loop this and make fun of me, but that's okay. Key features, unified enterprise portal, HR predefined services, service catalog, knowledge management, best practice, Microsoft Teams integration, now mobile, virtual agent conversations, lifecycle events configuration, and advanced workday con integration. Technical features, HCM integrations, mobile app configuration, and virtual agent conversations. I have no pretty pictures, but this is the make work better with employee experience the YAA way. I hope I'm saying that right, by YAA Limited. Up next on our list, Fujitsu Field Force Optimizer. This is going to be uh, functional features. Create schedule optimization profiles with customization tools. Assign execution orders. That sounds bad. Uh, select opti optimization horizon. Assign quantitative values and schedule optimization. You see there on the technical side, we've got oh, minimizing overtime and SLA breaches, maximizing productivity and fitness of assignment, prioritization of non-mandatory skills, and preferred agents. And what is this? Take field service management to a new level with unparalleled scheduling optimization. We've got a little video here. I'm not going to click on a video in my video, but that is the new app from Fujitsu Services Limited. Up next is going to be two from GRC Templar Shield. We'll open the first one here. This is going to be Evolving Maturity Accelerator. Uh, key features, a maturity assessment accelerator using the NIST cybersecurity framework, 111 uh, evolving cybersecurity maturity controls, um, a new evolving methodology for assessment, dashboards and reports, FFIEC categorization and CAT control objectives. 
uh, integrated reporting dashboards for domain and assessment factors. Um, so we do have some screenshots on this. I start off with a dashboard there. It looks like the old dashboards. Um, I've got a list here of control objectives in the view for FFIEC. Then I've got a risk assessment or two risk assessments. Uh, one showing the assessment summary tab and the other showing the uh, I can't really read that. It's right there in the middle, but I'll zoom in and see what I can see later. Uh, evolving, this is a report, FFIEC Cybersecurity Evolving, Mo Mo Evolving Maturity Results. I can't talk. And then back to that dashboard. So that's the pictures for this particular one from Templar Shield. They had another one here for Inherent Risk and Baseline Maturity. Uh, so this is Baseline Maturity Assessment. It looks like more assessments, uh, more of the same uh, same technical features and key features. I'm not seeing integrated reporting dashboards for domain and assessment factors. But everything else pretty much looks the same. This is using the integrated risk management product. I've got a smaller view of a dashboard um, and then a stacked applica or risk assessment view like the last one and a smaller view of the dashboard again. So um, screenshots are kind of hard to read on this one if you, anybody's watching from Templar Shield. Um, they're not really, they're showing up even blurry on this page. But anyways, new stuff from Templar Shield. Next on our new list is Health Insurance Quote and Enroll. This is an integrated quote and enrollment solution optimized for your business. Key features, single online portal, online quote management, enrollment and renewals, product catalog and comparison, network information, guided service transactions, FAQs and information, security and regulatory compliance, and compensation. Technical features are seamless CRM and third-party integrations, workflow and flow designer, mobile experience, virtual agent reporting, and analytics. Let's take a look at the pictures here for this new app. There's that portal before login. There's that login page as I log in. And then there's after logging in their landing page to start a group quote, health insurance, browse all plans. Uh, so nice little portal view there. This is a screen capture of the service now, H-I-Q-E. I -E. don't know what that means, uh, but it looks like, it looks like almost like we need to submit a ticket almost. It's hard to read that one too on those screenshots. This looks like some plans, showing some plans they can select and compare the different plans. And a quote has been successfully submitted, so you can quote summary for ABC Corp. And let's see what else. There's a screen capture of a dashboard showing some pretty graphics. And we're back to the before login picture. So that's a new app from Enri, Health Insurance Quote and Enroll. Next on our list is going to be Peak Perform. Getting towards the bottom here. SLK SLK Peak Perform ServiceNow Connector uh, delivers peak business performance driven by actionable intelligence generated using various data produced by an enterprise. Key features uh, uses business intelligence to provide auto resolution to incidents saving humongous manual hours to its customers. I've never seen that before. Um, saving humongous manual hours. Um, it's quite a claim. This is a major release. It looks like the new release. This might be a been out already, but let's take a look at the pictures. Uh, incident form. Yeah, I don't see anything unique on the incident form here other than the assignment group, eliminate queue. Um, okay, so the system administrator is classifying the incident for auto resolution. Ticket processing is in progress. Sales order line cancellation in progress. Okay, so we're looking at some uh, automation on self-resolving incidents. That's really interesting. There's a list of incidents. And there's an incident again, can't cancel line 4.1 for SO service order, 71325. So it must be seeing that and then going and doing the cancellation. Uh, intriguing little product there for Peak Perform from SLA Cost Software PVT Limited. Uh, last on our list, but not the least, SysDig. Did I say that right? Yes, yeah, SysDig Container Vulnerability Response. This is a technical preview. Enables companies to run workloads confidently by providing a powerful container vulnerability scanning with contextualized information to prioritize the most critical vulnerabilities, not a single blind spot, no guesswork, ingest the SysDig container vulnerabilities into ServiceNow container vulnerability data model. So container vulnerability management is an application in ServiceNow. Let's take a look at the screenshots. There's the menu for configuring it. Uh, didn't mean to do that. There is the vulnerability profile. So this is actually configuring the integration. You get a name, instance, API key, etc. region. And then there's a container vulnerable item with all of the fields redacted except for the source. That's interesting. Um, so no information there, uh, just a bunch of redaction. But you can see what a container vulnerable item actually looks like. And then we're back to the menu. So that is the last new 
application in the ServiceNow store for this episode. Now we have 20 highlights that we want to cover. Let's take a look at those highlights. Absolute Connector is first on our list. Let's see what happened with them. Oh my goodness, version 1.0.04. Patch fixes some bugs which were interfering with US data center customers from being able to execute remote management commands. In particular, reach scripts, freeze, unfreeze, and unroll. Additionally, a new logging verbosity property was added to enable debug logging, and the user mapping property is now being properly enforced. So if you're using Absolute Connector, got some fixes in there, fixes, not fixes, fixes in there with that patch, so you may want to take a look. Next on our list is Best Practice Engine. They had an update to version 5.2.35. Let's see, is now officially available. New in the back end, ADO integration, view scan status, suite scans, on-demand summary scans, window indices for performance heavy tables, and evaluate definition for field. You can visit their website, bpe-releases, for additional details from the Bravium Consulting team on Best Practice Engine. Next on the list is Book and Pay. Book and Pay had an update to version 3.1.1 and a booking portal was added. So if you're interested in that booking portal, you may want to update. Next is going to be CloudGuard Dome 9, upgraded to version 2. Setting in version 2, support for custom status mappings, creation of tiled incidents mapped to existing incidents, added compatibility to Utah, Tokyo, San Diego, and Rome versions. Wow, that's a lot, Um, and I have a feeling I missed another release notes fail. Look at that, everybody. Same release notes as September 6, 2022. Um, all they changed is looks like Quebec and Rome versions added compatibility, and I can see Utah and Tokyo got added there. So I'm thinking that is the update there. That's all they changed in this release notes. Um, really, really poor uh, uh, release notes there, CloudGuard team. Um, that's by Checkpoint Software Technologies, Inc. I'm going to go ahead and reclassify that one. So my stats get updated while we're moving through the rest of these. Cloudworks had an update to version 2.2.4. This is going to support Microsoft Azure, Cloud Discovery, ARM template consumption and simplified catalog creation, AWS billing insights, maintenance schedule, business hours scheduling for cloud cost optimization. That is the update from New Rocket's Cloudworks application. Up next, Digital Shadow Security Operations Connector version 3, update application to use the new Searchlight API and bi-directional state and comment synchronization. So that's new in that major release from Digital Shadows, uh, the Digital Shadow Security Operations Connector. Next is going to be DocWorks. DocWorks had an update to version 2.0.1. I have no version history here, so let's scroll down to the release notes and we see features that were added. Advanced field mapping allows mapping a document multiple tables or any custom requirement. And HTML support, they can map fields in HTML template and generate a document. So that's what's new from New Rockets and DocWorks. Up next is going to be InfoBip Notify, got upgraded to version 1.15. And let's see, uh, oh yeah, I thought this was funny too. They've got the initial release, November, December, and somehow they rewound to February 2022. I think they just forgot to change that to February 2023 because this came out on February 28th, 2023. Send voice message from incident, send voice message from workflow, and check message report from workflow. So if you're using InfoBit Notify, got a couple of updates from the InfoBit team. Next on our list is going to be Inri again with Inri Loan Small Business Loan Management. Upgrade to 2.3.1. Again, I've got no history on my versions over there, so let's scroll down to the release notes. Forgiveness calculation based on SBA guidelines, new portal UI, virtual agent topics, GRC risk framework and dashboards, and case types for inquiry, dispute, and modify a loan. So that's what's new from the INRI team on small business loan management. Next up is going to be Mandiant Advantage Attack Surface Management version 1.0.1. Yes, it is not the first version. The initial release was 1.0.0, not sure what that 3 means, but in February, they increased the accuracy of CMDB item matching. Thank you, Mandy and team, for that update. Next is going to be recorded future for security incident response and threat intelligence. Added a new related list into security incident table called recorded future reference info. Table shows reference fragments, source name, and source URL related to the specific incident. So that's what's new from recorded future in their new or in their updated security incident response and threat intelligence application. Next on the highlights, SailPoint Identity IQ 
for service catalog v2 new in this version or 2.4.22 separation of duty hard and soft checks search engine performance and scalability improvements and some stabilization and bug fixes nice example of some good release notes there from the SailPoint technologies team up next is going to be service operations express list app notice this is different from the express list that was in the release notes fails this is something i've never seen before but basically uh, a back-end API store application for service operations workspace express list going to version 0.0.4.4 0 .0, 0 .4, uh, new back-end API app private so I'm guessing this is something that gets installed with the service operations workspace express list application not app and note it's an, it's an it is an innovation lab offering so it's one of those from the service now's innovation lab next on the list it's going to be software bill of materials upgraded to version 1.1.0. They fixed some a save action during the manual SBOM document upload is addressed to not throw an error, enhanced the cycle and DX parsing logic to consider nested components as dependencies, and addressed logic to avoid some SBOMs creating duplicate applications. So some significant fixes there, not just a little tiny fix. This is also from the Innovation Lab uh, and upgraded to version 1.1.0. Next from TalkDesk, they had an update to version 3.0.0 and a single UI. Is this the same thing? Nope, it's new. Uh, TalkDesk can be embedded within ServiceNow on a single user interface, allowing agents to use ServiceNow as a single pane of glass. And they're highlighting this as a major release for Tokyo, San Diego, and Rome. So if you're using TalkDesk from TalkDesk Inc., that got a major release, major update. Next up is going to be Toolbox. Toolbox got an update to version 1.0.6. And it includes the below new features, some planned jobs, casual party and wellness, that sounds like fun, restricted records, early interventions and referrals, and payment configurations. Again, another nice example of some release notes that let us know what changed in the application, even though this is a minor release from the Enable Labs PTY Limited or Toolbox application. Next is going to be the Vivid Charts Data Engagement Platform. Uh, let's see, they went to version 1.2.8 and... They've got not just new apps, they've got new features, new chart types, they've improved a lot of stuff. Um, some charts now have their data source locked into a specific table to ensure the chart is used properly and provides the best experience when building the chart. But you can see all these other improvements, no offense, Vivid Chart scene, but that's a lot of stuff for me to say. And I, my voice would not make it through it all, so I'm scrolling a little bit. Now we've got some fixes down here on issues and something with the RIDAC chart. Uh, several other log, several other issues, and bugs were smashed. I love bug smashing. Go smash those bugs. All right, that's version 1.2.8 from the Vivid Charts team, Vivid Charts Data Engagement Platform. So if you're using that, lots of good stuff in that particular update. You may want to take a look. Next, we're going to look at workload management. This is from Unify Limited, upgrading to version 1.0.3, but they have notes in here for 1.0.8. So I am not sure, but let's just say that we're going to say this is the 1.0.8, even though the version is misaligned here. Um, issue improving the records via the portal, missing scroll bar on the portal, styling issue. So it looks like a bug fix in several of the override. I told reference qualifier. Yeah, so we've got a good 10 to 12 different bugs that have been smashed. Um, I like that from the last app by the team there at Unify Limited. Upgrading to version 1.0.3. Next is going to be Zoom In. Zoom In had an upgrade to version 7.0.1. Case deflection analytics, bug fixes for search filter analytics events, and Swagger UI. I don't know what Swagger UI is, but I bet it's got some swagger. Um, that's new from Zoom In and the Zoom In Software Limited team. Last on our list, number 20 coming in, the ZTAP Sync from ZPAT Tap Sync Service Now Sync. Critical Start Inc. version 1.0.2. Um, this is for February 28, 2023. All right. Simplify, alert, coalesce, and reopening. Use correlation ID. Look, this was supposed to be a bulleted list, and somehow the store turned it into one line. Use correlation ID. Display to coalesce incidents instead of sys ID. Reopen the same incident and close in service now, but open in DTAP. De deactivate parent comment copying and parent relations. Fix small bug design fixes. Move product, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can see that. Um, so, nice little update or minor release from ZTAP Sync by 
Critical Start Inc. That is our last application. Let's scroll back up to the top here. We did make some changes as we were going through there. I think I removed a highlight and added another release notes fail. So our final metrics for this March 3rd, 2023 edition of ServiceNow Store Highlights, 13 new releases, 19 updates that were worth highlighting, one small fix, and six release notes fails. That is it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in what's going on in the ServiceNow store and what got updated and what should I be paying attention to and do I need to update my application. Until next time, don't forget to always be learning.